In this video, I'll be discussing about operator and chair positions. This topic has greater clinical significance because the moment you follow the exact protocol while treating a patient, then it helps the clinician to perform treatments in an efficient manner and also decreases the risk of musculoskeletal disorders. So now let's look into the various operating and chair positions. Now coming to the operator positions, we have different operator positions and for a right-handed operator, we have 7 o'clock, 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock including 12 o'clock positions. Whereas for a left-handed operator, we have 1, 3 o'clock and 5 o'clock positions. So for a right-handed operator, we have these following chair positions that is 7 o'clock also called as right front, 9 o'clock right, 11 o'clock right rear and 12 o'clock direct rear. So we use these chair positions for operating upon different teeth. For example, 7 o'clock position is mainly used for operating upon maxillary and mandibular anterior teeth including mandibular posterior teeth of right side. So right front position or 7 o'clock position is used for operating upon the following teeth. And then we have 9 o'clock position or right position. So 9 o'clock position is mainly used for operating upon the facial surfaces of maxillary and mandibular posterior teeth. So facial surfaces of maxillary and mandibular posterior teeth. And 11 o'clock position, also called as the right rear position, is considered to be the universal position as we can access almost all teeth within the oral cavity, either by direct or indirect vision. So 11 o'clock position is considered as universal position. And then we have 12 o'clock position or direct rear, which helps us to treat the lingual surfaces of mandibular anteriors. So lingual surfaces of mandibular anteriors by direct vision. So depending upon the teeth which we are going to operate upon, we use different chair positions. And having understood where to sit, now it's equally important to know how to sit. Because sitting plays a major role, it helps to reduce the operator's fatigue and also reduces the chances of developing musculoskeletal disorders if proper protocol is followed. So while sitting, the dentist should make sure that his spine is almost upright or slightly bending forward with proper backrest. And also, the thighs should be parallel to the floor and the lower limbs should be almost perpendicular to the floor and the feet must be placed uniformly on the floor. So these are some of the operator positions that are to be kept in mind while treating any patient. Now let's look into various chair positions of the patient. So basically we have a supine position or semi-supine position. So this is a supine that is lying down position and this is semi-supine where we angulate the back of the chair at 45 degrees to floor. So supine position is most commonly used when we are operating upon maxillary arch, the teeth present in the maxillary arch. And semi-supine is advised when we operate upon the teeth present in the mandibular arch. So by maintaining these chair positions, we can make sure that the patient has a stress-free treatment protocol and he has less muscle fatigue and stays comparatively comfortable and cooperates with our treatment. And then moving on to the general considerations, most important aspect is working distance. So what should be the working distance and what is working distance? Working distance is nothing but the distance between the vision and the operating field that is the oral cavity. 
Ideally, working distance can have a range of 28 to 35 centimeters or it should be equivalent to that of the distance while we are reading a book. For example, I have taken a book and I have started reading. So this is the ideal distance which I try to maintain while reading. So this is the very same distance which we can use while operating upon the patient. So working distance again varies from operator to operator depending upon the quality of their eyesight. And the next aspect is visibility, illumination, and accessibility. So we need to have proper optical aids like dental loops or operating microscopes in order to improve the visibility range of the operating field. And also bright illumination is mandatory. And most importantly, by following these operator and chair positions, we'll have proper accessibility to the operating field and most importantly while operating upon maxillary teeth the maxillary plane has to be approximately perpendicular to the floor and while operating upon the mandibular teeth the mandibular plane should be approximately at 45 degrees compared to the level of the floor so these considerations should be kept in mind while operating upon any patient no matter what the procedure is so by doing so we improve the clinical experience of not just the patient but also the operator and there is a greater chance of reducing fatigue and the risk of developing musculoskeletal disorders at a later date so this is in brief about operator and chair positions and you might get certain questions related to this topic from the operator position. So you have different positions of the operator and different teeth which we operate upon depending upon the position. And also questions can be asked regarding the working distance and regarding the patient chair position etc. So keeping these things in mind, it's mandatory for any clinician or operator to understand the basic principles of operator and chair position in order to enhance the outcome of the treatment.